new intro so much love and appreciation to those of you who have been with me for the two-year period plus that i've been doing this um thank you for showing your uh love and support to the channel and to anybody else who is brand new to the platform and you would like to support the channel also you can do it by way of patreon anchor the clothing store and also the shoe shop that is listed in the comment description below and again thank you to any and all of you guys who have been here to support this channel during the two plus year period i wouldn't be able to do what i do every single day without you January 15th of 2018, Community Renewal Society's annual Martin Luther King Jr. Faith in Action Assembly features Illinois Gubernatorial Candidate Forum. We were fortunate to have several candidates, Democratic and Republican, answering questions about their potential futures in office. While the event features several key moments, one of which most alarming statements came from former state rep Janae Eves in her response to a source on violence in Chicago. Quote, the problem is the gun violence in the Chicago city, predominantly. And you know how we're going to solve it? Fathers in the home. Fathers in the home, she repeated, as the majority of the crowd erupted into audible disagreement. Ives, however, was not alone. A small but notable number of attendees agreed with her comments. In fact, a significant number of people beyond the walls of the assembly also agreed with her words. As later remarked by a spokesperson, Similar statements were shared by former President Barack Obama during his famous 2008 Father's Day sermon at the Apostle Church of God. Too many sermons on Father's Day seem to focus on black fathers need to be engaged in their children's lives. The viewpoint about black fatherhood is a well-established structure of thought with a host of supporting beliefs that reinforce it like a rebarb in a concrete slab. Society is devastated because the majority of African-American fathers are not at home nor involved in the lives of their children. The solution, therefore, is for black men to return to their responsibilities. These statements are stereotypes, fabrications, and completely wrong. And the impact of these thoughts is girded in the foundation of American society, from systems of education to access to employment to incarceration. Fatherlessness is not defined by living arrangement, Josh Levy's article, No, Most Black Kids Are Not Fatherless, deconstructs the 70% of black children are fatherless myth. Data from the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention states and verifies that the majority of black fathers actually live with their children, 2.5 million versus the 1.7 million who don't. Furthermore, whether living in the same home or not, black fathers are the most involved of all primary recorded races and ethnic groups. Many fatherless statistics utilize marital and housing statuses as cornerstone metrics, resulting in highly inflated figures. These stats do not account for the fact that men have died or passed away. Couples may live together while unmarried. Couples may be divorced. And let's not forget about the due to the system of incarceration, men are not only separated from their families, but often even prevented from staying in the homes where their families, if the housing is federally provided. New York Times' 2015 analysis of 1.5 million missing black men gave credence to the shocking reality, presenting loud and clear how our own country, mass incarceration industrial complex has claimed more men than were enslaved in 1850. Statistics about white males with a nearly 40% divorce rate and significant numbers choosing to have and or adopted children independently are entirely immune to the views levied upon African-American men. Search by scholars like Waldo E. Johnson Jr., PhD, professor at University of Chicago School of Social Services Administration, leads in efforts to re-educate about black fatherhood and also brings notice to men who stand in as a genuine, authentic father figure for children who have lost their fathers for whatever reason. When it comes to conceptualizing African-American fatherhood, stereotypes and anecdotal experiences paired with inflated data to produce a dish that is superficial as the fraudulent images of fast food we see in marketing ads. The dish is served and sadly consumed so often that even gubernatorial and presidential candidates eat it up and perpetually reserve it to audiences. The impact of this superficially makes its way into policy and law formation. 
curriculum access, and discipline in our education system, law enforcement profiling, and use of force, biases in court-based custody decisions, and many more unknown and unseen implicit ways in which society perceives black males. Rather than focusing on the root causes of structural, institutional, and implicit radicalization, violence, poverty, and general lack of scapegoated onto the backs of black fathers. The saddest thing about this is that even with this information that is readily accessible to anybody who has an internet connection and a mobile device or some type of computer, they can clearly look up the statistics, the numbers, what have you. They can read the reports and they will still try to state that black men don't spend any or barely any type of time with their own children. That black men would rather choose to be with other people and or black men would rather choose to abandon their own people and their community for others. Even though we have clear cut numbers stating that black men tend to spend more time and be in the house with their kids than any other group of men. This is why I tell people you have to be very careful of the types of individuals that you decide to follow that want to give you a skewed narrative based off of emotions, based off of fear, and based off of the fact that they want others who feel a certain type of way to come together and form this type of voice to speak against black men, but they will use that exact same voice to uplift other groups of men and to also try as they might to portray other groups of men as better providers, better husbands, better fiancés, better boyfriends, as better men in general, not only to those black women, but also to their children as well. So like I said before, much love and appreciation to all of the fathers that are out there, all of the black fathers that are out there and that are present in their children's lives day in and day out. Thank you for being a positive black male role model. One of which that I, during my life, was able to look up to and to aspire to be or at least to have some type of blueprint or a guiding line in order to point me away from the streets, from the drugs, from the jails, from the prisons, and also from death. Thank you for being the men out here who are forging a way, who are also leading ways for young black men to go, to be positive, and to become a better version of themselves thank you for every single thing that you do let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that's stated in the comment description below and as always peace love and stay tuned for the next video